In this video, I'm going to say a few things about the Manhattan Project. This was a project during World War II in the United States to develop the world's first nuclear weapon. And it happened as a result of the situation with Germany. In Germany, Hitler was making huge technological advancements. For example, he had developed the V2 rocket, and this is one of the V2 rockets here taking off. He was able to hit London, bombard targets in England from Germany. There was no defense against this. And he had also developed a jet aircraft, the Messerschmitt. You see the, the jet engine down here. No propeller, very reliable, very fast aircraft. Uh, and it was in Germany that the scientists, we've mentioned them before, Otto Hahn and Fritz Strassmann, they had split the atom. And there was fear that they may, might be working on a uranium-based nuclear weapon. Now, German aggression against the Jewish population had driven a lot of significant people out of Germany, including Albert Einstein and Lise Meitner. And these people had left Germany, but some of the German scientists who had stayed behind were working on issues dealing with nuclear fission. And people knew this, and people knew that, that Germany might be trying to develop a nuclear weapon, and that if they did, that that could give them a huge advantage in this war for world domination. In 1939, Albert Einstein wrote a letter to President Roosevelt, President of the United States, and, um, and here, here's a picture. This is the letter you see from Einstein up here to Roosevelt, and he mentions some, some significant things in here. Um, and you see the, the urgency in his tone. Certain aspects of the situation have, have arisen which call for watchfulness and, um, if necessary, quick action on the part of the administration. And I'll scroll down here. He says, I believe it's my duty to call to your attention the following facts. Um, it says it's been made possible or probable through the work of scientists in France to be possible to set up a nuclear chain reaction in a large mass of uranium. And this is the chain reaction that would lead to a catastrophic explosion. And he says it's certain that this could be achieved in the immediate future. And this new phenomenon would also lead to the to the construction of bombs, extremely powerful bombs of a new type. And he goes on in the letter to describe the situation with Germany accumulating supplies of uranium and the United States only having at the time limited access to uranium supplies. And he was making some recommendations for action. And the Manhattan Project was conceived to do the research and development required to actually construct a nuclear weapon. Uh, the project got underway in a number of places in Oak Ridge, Tennessee, which is really interesting. And this is a picture from Oak Ridge. In Oak Ridge, they were doing the work to separate the uranium-235 from the, the, the other uranium. Most of the uranium in the Earth is uranium-238. And dispersed through the uranium-238 are small amounts of uranium-235. And they need to refine the uranium, basically, separate out the the uranium-235, which was the uranium they needed to make the bomb. And that was going on at Oak Ridge. Oak Ridge National Labs is still a, a major research lab there today. And um, it was a, a town of over 100,000 people that wasn't even on the map, literally. This was a top secret operation, and I've actually seen maps of Tennessee from the 1940s, and Oak Ridge doesn't even, doesn't even appear on the map. The entire town was a secret, and the work going on there was secret, and a lot of the people working on the project were just doing their job at a particular machine, didn't even know the details of what they were working on. It was at Los Alamos Nat National Labs that they actually constructed the bomb, and over here on the right side of the image on screen right now are some pictures of the design and um, these were different designs that were considered. And the one up at the top is uh, the one, or one of these gun type methods right here. The idea is to take one piece of uranium, which is a subcritical mass, and combine it with some other uranium, which is also a subcritical mass. And when the two pieces got together, then they would have a, a critical mass that would lead to a chain reaction. So this piece is fired into the other piece or this was a possibility, this piece was slid over the top of that one. Or in this design here, these four pieces would be blasted in toward the center and these little pieces of uranium here would come together and a chain reaction would start. And this picture down at the bottom 
is another gun type mechanism where a piece of uranium is fired into another and it was one of the gun type mechanisms that ended up being used and it was at Los Alamos that they they uh, did the actual design and construction of the bomb and these pictures on the right are actual drawings from their from one of the books they had there when they were considering different possible designs it's been declassified since then but these these little sketches were were highly classified top secret information at the time there are a lot of interesting stories from that era and from this project I'll just relay one uh, there were a lot of calculations that needed to be done with uh, dealing with the physics and the um, the, the radioactive decay and the chain reaction a lot of tremendously computationally intensive calculations and they didn't have computers at the time but they had some early calculating machines which were mechanical calculating devices uh, going back hundreds of years ago people had developed mechanical calculators where you could flip these little switches and then turn a crank and this combination of gears and levers inside the machine would do a calculation and they could multiply and divide numbers with these mechanical devices and IBM was making these at the time and they had lots of these at work at Los Alamos doing the calculations and people would put in the numbers and flip the switches and crank the handle and get out the results and they were, were just doing just thousands and thousands of these calculations and they actually hired school students to do these calculations and um, the, the students didn't know what they were doing they were just they, all they knew is that they had been drafted by the army to do this work and um, and they were just grinding out these numbers it was very tedious work very boring work and the error rate rate was very high and one of the physicists Richard Feynman he decided that the this work would proceed a lot more effectively if the students knew what they were working on and he convinced the generals at Los Alamos to give the students security clearance and to inform them what was going on and so they got all the um, the the security clearance for these students and sat them down in a room and said look we're working on a new super weapon that could defeat Hitler and end this war and the students were just blown away that they were really a part of something this significant and their error rate immediately dropped down to zero and they even started coming up with new ways to make the calculations more efficient and more accurate and they, they, they pulled this off it was years and years of work but, the, but they ended up constructing this bomb and here's a picture of one of them this was called the fat man and there was another smaller one called the little boy and and they were both dropped they ended up not being used against Hitler uh, the war in in Germany ended and um, and these the, the war in the Pacific against Japan continued and these were dropped on Japan one on Hiroshima and one on Nagasaki and the results were just absolutely devastating here's a picture of the mushroom cloud from the explosion over Nagasaki basically one bomb would destroy an entire city and tens of thousands of people died instantly in the explosion here's a picture of Hiroshima this was the, the first city bombed and this was a picture taken obviously after the explosion but you can just see the devastation just goes on for miles and miles in every direction a few buildings that were designed to be earthquake proof uh, were still standing although they weren't in great shape and most of the most of the buildings were just completely obliterated and um, and 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 the people in them everything just instantly gone it was just utter devastation but these bombs were effective at ending the war they dropped a bomb on Hiroshima and then the Japanese didn't know if that was our only one they didn't know if we would be able to repeat that so they they didn't surrender right away and then a few days later uh, we dropped another one on Nagasaki and the Japanese surrendered after that and World War II was over there's still controversy today over the dropping of these bombs obviously something of, of this magnitude of devastation has huge moral and ethical implications um, the the argument at the time which was uh, as far as I understand very well accepted was that that doing this even though this was a terrible thing to to destroy cities like this doing this was worth it because to end the war by conventional means would have would have meant uh, an invasion of Japan by ground forces and they were estimating approximately a million lives lost on each side in a ground invasion and this was a way to end the war with much less loss of life even though this was absolutely devastating to, the, to these two cities 
it was considered to be a much lesser evil than ending the war by conventional means. And even though people still discuss this and debate this today, whether or not this should have been done, my understanding of the history is that it was not controversial at the time, that, that the people involved recognized that this, that this was the best way to get all of this war over with and ended quickly and actually with lesser loss of life than the alternatives. And the one other point that's worth noting and that is a little bit scary is that these bombs were fission bombs and these are far less powerful than the fusion bombs that have been developed since then. And those have never been used in warfare. They've only been tested at various places, but the fusion bombs are many, many times more devastating than the fission bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki.